diddly do YouTube diddles here and I want to start off this recording by saying thank you I know there are countless other and probably better dramatic reading channels out there so it means a lot that you decided to stop by and give this old faggot a chance now before we get started I just want to say that this fan fiction actually means a lot to me because it's one of the first that me and Diego ever read together and yeah so Let's get things started. I've stalled long enough. I just don't want to read this. Lemony Pet Shop by Unusual Paradox It was a warm and sunny summer day in New York as Brandon took one of the shop's pets out for her daily walk. A gentle breeze tugged at his wavy, shoulder-length brown hair and the sun's warming rays tingled his lightly tanned skin. Zoe did her typical dog things, sniffing trees, panting happily, and barking at the occasional butterfly or pigeon. Central Park was rather lively, fitting for the nice weather, and bustling metropolis that engulfed the small park. Small in comparison to the city, that is. Squatting, Zoe lifted a leg and urinated on a small patch of fresh, green grass. Impartially watching, Brandon spoke. How are you guys so comfortable doing your business like that? Zoe's response was immediate upon finishing her potty break. Darling, we're animals. We don't have the same sense of decency that you humans have, she said, glancing at him as she scratched the grass behind her with her hind legs. Two weeks ago, this act would have shocked him, maybe even make him question his sanity. But since his accident with the dumbwaiter, He's had time to come to terms with it. You see, he could talk to animals, and they talked back to him. But he could actually understand them more than any other human could. Shugging, he responded, I guess. I know, retorted Zoe. Glad I'm not a mewing kitten or drooling mutt. Er, sorry, he apologized. No offense taken, Brandon. Good. I guess I should watch what I say from now on, he told her. I mean, you guys could get offended by some things I might say. You guess, she echoed in a tone that implied he should. Hoping to change the subject, Brandon fished in the pocket of his gray sweater and produced a small blue ball. Hey Zoe, you want the ball? Instantly forgetting the conversation, Zoe dropped low on all fours and wagged her tail furiously. Yeah, yeah, I want the ball, she replied. You want it? You want it? He repeated, teasing the terrier. Yes, yes, I want the ball. I really want it. She yapped, jumping up on her hind legs to show that she really wanted the small sphere. Then go get it said Brandon, lobbing the ball into the bushes. Yipping excitedly, Zoe tore after the ball and returned the object to Brandon a few moments later. Good girl, he enthused. Give me the ball. Dropping it obediently, Zoe returned to her playful stance as she waited for Brandon to pick it up and throw it again. Retrieving the now slimy toy and tossed it further in the same direction. While Zoe searched for it, Brandon sat on a nearby bench and relaxed, letting the shimmering sunlight dance across his face and hands. It felt heavenly. Zoe reappeared a few moments later and deposited the ball at his feet once again, and Brandon picked it up and threw it for her. After repeating this process for a while, Brandon noticed that Zoe was breathing hard and her tongue hung out of her mouth as she panted heavily. All right, Zoe, I think that's enough for now, he said, placing the ball back into his pocket, and Zoe pouted. He laughed. Come on, let's just relax for a while before I take you back to the pet shop. I can't leave Russell in charge for too long. He's already got a big enough head as it is. Reluctantly, Zoe agreed and hopped up onto Brandon's lap, where she curled up and rested. Closing his eyes, Brandon sank deeper into the wooden bench and felt the wind and sunshine. 
It was so nice. Blairly, he yawned and smacked his lips. It would be so nice to just get a few minutes of shut-eye. A while later, he was prodded awake by something poking his thigh. Blinking his eyes open, Brandon realized he had fallen asleep and anxiously glanced at his watch. 12.30. So he had only slept for a little a half hour, but still. Then noticing the prodding feeling in his leg again, he turned his attention to Zoe who was sniffing his leg and nosing at it. Was he trying to get the ball? She saw where he put it and knew how to get it. So why was she nudging his leg? Zoe, what are you doing? He inquired, a puzzled expression crossing his face. Startled, Zoe jumped and looked guiltily at him. I smell something, she admitted. Whatever you have in your left pocket, smells heavenly, but I don't have anything in my, he began, then flushed a bright red as he noticed a familiar shape bulging from his thigh. How did he get an erection? <laughs> I'm asking the same thing. Oh god. Where is it? There it is. How did he get an erection? Did it have anything to do with Zoe sitting on his lap? Brandon, what's wrong? She asked. Nothing, he hastily replied, hoping his heart on would disappear. Just stop. Why? Because Brandon didn't know how to explain to Zoe, or even if he should. Eventually, coming to a conclusion, he decided to tell her, since she was just a dog, after all. Even if she didn't understand, it was no more embarrassing than her taking a leak in front of him. Well, that's my, er, uh, penis. And, well, it's aroused. Zoe's eyes widened. Is that the delicious smell? Er, uh, maybe. I can't smell anything. But I don't have over a thousand olfactories like you. How do you make it go down? She asked. Brandon shrugged. Usually I, uh, take care of it. But if I leave it alone, it should go away, he said. Zoe thought for a moment. Would it go away faster if you took care of it? Maybe, Brandon admitted. Then go for it, she prompted. What? Brandon blanched. Right now? In public? Why not? Because that's personal, not to mention inappropriate. Humans are weird, sniffed Zoe. Brandon didn't respond. It wasn't going away and his conversation wasn't helping. Zoe noticed this and observed that it seemed to swell and pulse slightly. What if I took care of it for you? She asked. Brandon paled and stared at Zoe. You serious? His incredulity clear in his tone. I am. Brandon didn't know how to respond. Part of him wanted to accept Zoe's offer, but his more logical side tried to repress that urge. She was a dog. He was a human. It was just wrong. But still, his subconscious persisted, and he reasoned that Zoe did offer, and was sentient enough to... No. Just... No, he couldn't, shouldn't. Glancing down at Zoe, he saw her looking up at him with her violet-colored eyes and cute cocked head. Well, maybe it couldn't hurt. Caving in, Brandon nodded and stood up, forcing Zoe to move onto the bench. Well, okay, but let's find a little more private spot, he agreed. Perking up at the acceptance and possibility to play with whatever he had in his pocket excited the small lap dog as she jumped down to follow him. Brandon had a fair idea of where to go. There was a hollow surrounded by thick bushes and completely hidden unless you knew what to look for or stumbled on it by accident. Settling in the hidden copse, Brandon propped himself up against the wood 
of the thick elm tree and took a quick breath. Nervous as a thief caught red-handed, Brandon unbuckled the belt of his pants and unfastened the button. His musk became stronger and Zoe found herself getting aroused too. Moving closer, she waited impatiently until he pulled his pants and boxers down a few inches so his member could poke out. Released from the relatively restricted area of his undergarments, his shaft snapped to attention and pointed straight up. While it was merely a modest six inches in length and about a half inch in diameter, it seemed huge to the tiny terrier. Despite its size and odd shape, Zoe was entranced by it. It was pure white like his skin, but paler and had a bit of extra skin covering the head. Thin blue veins could be seen around its exterior, and it twitched slightly. Noticing Zoe's hesitation, Brandon spoke up in a quiet whisper. If you don't want to, we can go back to the daycare and I'll take care of it later, he told her in hushed tones. No, replied Zoe in an equally hushed tone. It's just that I've never seen one this big. I've seen Russell's, but that was tiny compared to this. I should hope so, murmured Brandon. Okay, so I lick it like this, asked Zoe, drawing her wet tongue across the backside of his tool from base to tip. Brandon shuddered from the touch and nodded weakly. Yeah, that's great, Zoe. More like that. Eager to please and taste his unique flavor, Zoe lapped her tongue along his pecker in quick, repetitive strokes. Brandon groaned quietly and closed his eyes as he let his body ease the tension in his back and shoulders. Zoe placed her paws on either side of his pecker and lowered her body to the ground to get a better position and focus on her task. Zoe licked diligently for several minutes before Brandon grunted and a few drops of pre-cum began to appear at the end of Shaft. <laughs> I forgot about this one! <laughs> oh god! Oh, I forgot about this line. Alright. Alright, just stay calm. You can do this. Look at my voice! Oh god! Oh god, alright. <laughs> Lick my balls too, please. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Oh. Lick my balls too, please. I mean, if you want to, he asked. His balls? So he paused. Did he mean this fleshy sack hanging under his dick? Shrugging, so he gave it a few test laps and Brandon grunted contently in response. While not as hairy as Russell's, they did have some fur on them but not enough to bother Zoe. Alternating between short, quick licks on his scrotum to longer, wet licks on his shaft, Zoe found she rather liked the taste and wondered why people didn't do this more often. As Zoe licked and teased his dick and coin purse, Brandon just relaxed and rested against the tree trunk with his eyes closed in contentment, letting the spaniel's wet tongue wash over his extremities. It was Nice. No. Magical, actually. Brandon became so lost in the sensation that he almost didn't notice when a small object struck the bush they were hiding behind, causing a rather loud rustle. Freezing and holding Zoe still for a moment, Brandon listened as a young boy called out and another shouted back. Not even daring to breathe, Brandon held still as the boy dug in the opposite side of the shrub for a few moments, 
fishing out the small object. After what seemed like an eternity, he heard the boy say, I got it, and scrambled away from the thin veil between him and Brandon. When the unexpected intruder departed, Brandon let his breath out in a relieved sigh. Looking down, he noticed he was nearly suffocating Zoe with his meat stick shoved halfway down her throat. Oops, he said, as he eased up on her head. Sorry, Zoe. To his surprise, however, Zoe didn't seem particularly angry or annoyed. Instead, she looked up at him with a sloppy grin. Don't worry about it, Brandon dear. I liked that. You did? He asked her, his surprise clear in his tone. Mm-hmm, <laughs> she replied, giving his shaft another lick. I actually wonder if it would fit in my other end. Other end, he wondered. After another millisecond, he understood what she was talking about. Looking her over, he grew several doubts. I think you might be a little small, Zoe. I wouldn't want to hurt you. Not to mention, it would be very awkward to explain to your owners why you're limping later. Oh, pish posh. I've taken a golden retriever before, and he wasn't much bigger. A golden retriever? Brandon realized it was possible and briefly marveled at how elastic some females could be in their anatomy. Thinking it over, he agreed. Why not? If Zoe said she could handle it, who was he to question it? Carefully lifting her up and positioning her over his fully erect member and slowly, gently lowered her onto it. To his surprise, it was rather easy to slip his rod into her lubricated love tunnel. He guessed she must have been more excited than he initially guessed. Zoe let out a small whimper as his first two inches eased its way in and let out a pleasurable shiver as the other three slid in more easily and readily. Brandon held her still as he let her adjust to his size. It did not take long for her walls to open up around his sausage. Once they did, Brandon began a small pace as he reveled in her gently squeezes and massages. As the motion became more fluid, the more Brandon and Zoe both relaxed and enjoyed the simple pleasure that came from it. It didn't take very long for Zoe to reach her limit, and she let out a hushed yip as her fluids slashed onto Brandon's pole and crotch. Almost immediately after that, Brandon grunted as he reached his own orgasm and shot his hot load into her womb. Expended, Brandon rested back against the tree and met Zoe's eyes. The small dog instinctively and gratefully licked his face twice. Pulling himself out of her, Brandon placed Zoe beside him while he pulled his jeans and boxers back up. In a rather dog-like fashion, Zoe lapped up his leaking seed and enjoyed the sweet and salty taste of his cum. Once both were finished and ready to head back to the lidless pet shop, Brandon clipped the leash onto Zoe's collar and stood up to make sure the coast was clear. Leading Zoe out of the thicket as nonchalantly as he could, Brandon began his fairly quick-paced walk back to the shop. Glancing down at Zoe, he smiled warmly. Thanks, Zoe. You're a good girl. Certainly not, she replied jestfully. But I'd like to do that again sometime. Brandon blushed a light crimson. Maybe we will. Back at the pet shop, Russell was trying his best to keep things under control. Sunil had been practicing his magic and attempted to make Pepper's rubber chicken disappear. It failed, but Pepper didn't find the act amusing at all. She began chewing out the hapless mongoose when Vinny, Sunil's best friend, stepped in and called Pepper's jokes lame. When the three came to Russell, he tried to get them to apologize to one another. Sunil did, but Pepper refused to believing she hadn't done anything wrong. Sunil and Vinny began shouting again, and Pepper returned their joint barrage with equal heat. Finally, Sunil threw his hands up and exclaimed that all women were the same, and Penny happened to overhear. Being somewhat of a feminist, Penny took offense at the phrase and got involved in the squabble. All the while, 
Minka looked on both bemused and entertained by the spectacle. When Brandon and Zoe entered, Russell looked up and spoke. Oh, thank heavens, Brandon, the pets are fighting and I can't get them to stop. Brandon frowned. I leave you in charge for one hour and I come back to this. Glancing at the clock, Russell replied with, It's actually been three hours, and where have you been? Wait, what's that smell? It wasn't me this time, called Pepper. No, it smells like... Suddenly the hedgehog's eyes widened when he realized what the odor was. What exactly have you? He was cut off by Brandon speaking to the pets. Okay, come here and let's try to settle this. So he padded over next to Russell, who gave her a questioning glare. You didn't do what I think you did, did you? Whatever are you talking about, Russell? Asked Zoe, giving him a vacant look. Never mind, said Russell. Turning her head away from the hedgehog, Zoe grinned when she rested her eyes on Brandon. Oh, thank Jesus, I'm done. I didn't think I'd make it through that. Um, it says here that this is one of many chapters. So if this ever gets an update, you know I'll be the first one to cover it. So, that being said, I'm going to go eat. I'm starving. Probably going to be thinking about dog pussy while I'm eating now. This is, uh, this is not a good way to start off your day. So, until next time. Diddle out. Good. I guess I should watch what I say. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got it. What? Brandon blanked. I don't know if that's blanked or blanched. Oh, gosh. Great. Now I gotta clear all these YouTube ads. Hold on. Let's get this over with so I can get back to reading this ranky fan fiction. Oh! The new thing is, is that a Toy Genie video? This is a Toy Genie video. There's a new... There's a new totally legit recap at, that came out at the time of me recording this, so everyone go check that out. Okay, so I lick it like this, asked Zoe, drawing her wet tongue. I should be salty and read it like that. You know what? Fuck it. For making me read this, I'm gonna be salty and read it the way and read it the way it's written. <clears throat> Closing his eyes, Brandon sank in the air. Okay, calm down. Startled. Zoe jumped and looked guilty. Startled. Joey. 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 Yeah, yeah. Joey the dog. I need that. Zoe reappeared. <laughs> I'm sorry. Zoe. <laughs> I keep thinking about what's coming. She yapped. Jumping up on her high legs. <laughs>